If it's not on your actual hand, you're not bleeding. Probably no one's bleeding. Uh, that's your story for that person. Go circle it. If if you don't really care, just circle a story that makes sense with you. And pass it back to the person. Thank you very much for entertaining me on that. <laughs> That's probably the most interesting. All right. So pass your paper back to the original hand. See. There you go. So I got your paper back. All right. Now flip it back to the front page. So now you got a nice blank place. You should kind of know where, what story you're looking at if you've already identified what story it is. Uh, if you want to write your own story, that's cool. That was just a silly uh, thing. Uh, today, if you remember from the uh, calendar that we did yesterday, what's sort of today's routine? What are we supposed to be doing with writing? What kind of writing? Yeah, it's a creative writing. So that's kind of what we started with. And of course, to start with your most recent experiences over the summer. You might have been in classes where you do sort of, hey, tell me about your summer, yada, yada. I don't want you to tell me anything. This isn't a telling thing. Okay? In fact, stories that tell you stuff is boring. You know, when someone's like, oh, first I went to Disneyland, and then I rode the Pirates ride, and it was fun. Okay, those are boring stories. If you ever pick up any book, and I'll, I'll, I'll identify it as we read our first book, what makes it a good story? I want you to write this at the top. This is sort of your theme for today and his creative writing. It's called Show Not Tell. Write that down. Show Not Tell. That's cool. That's fine. Just as long as you have a nice blank page to fill up with your creativity right now. Show Not Tell. What do, I, what do you think I mean by Show Not Tell? Show. Describe. Yeah, it, describe. I don't want you to list describe. I want you to do something else described. I want you to describe with actual images, fully multimedia images. Put me in the place of you, or put me in the place where I can see you. All right? And so in those situations, I don't know if you are sad. When you say, I am sad, in a story, that is boring. You're telling me something. What do people look like when they're sad? Right. Okay, so those are the things that I want you to be specific. There's literally water that wells up in your eyes as you see something that you hate. Okay, that's a way better description than just saying, I am sad. As he stared out into the locker, his eyes filled with water, yeah, tears, and he became dark in his face, mouth downturned. You can describe it as detailed as you want or as sort of general as you want, but make sure you're describing how people look, how people sound, how things look, how things sound, etc. All the five senses. Now, I didn't make this up. This is good writing advice from all sorts of people. Anyone know what this movie's from? No. Oh, no. Oh. 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 Anyone know? Do you guys know who the actor is? Edward Norton? No. Okay. Uh, this is from a movie called Fight Club. Oh. oh. Yeah. 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 You guys know what I'm talking about now. Yeah. Fight Club. Okay, Brad Pitt, Edward Norton movie. Really good. It actually comes from an even better book from a really awesome author who does all sorts of really good books. And if you're a guy who hates to read, there's a guy in here that just doesn't like to read, don't really read very much on your own. Cool. Um, Chuck Palahniuk might be a voice that you identify with. A lot of voices tend to be female. So maybe this would be a little bit helpful to you uh, to know that for your choice novel. Fight Club is a novel, and it's a really good one. So this is a, a, a quote from Chuck Palahniuk. In short, no more shortcuts. When you write, you're not telling people stuff. That's a shortcut. When you say, it was fun, or I was sad. That's a shortcut. I want to hear, I want to see, I want you to show me what it looks like when somebody is angry or grieving or when you are having fun. What does that look like? What are you doing when it happens? So you want to be descriptive. It's a specific sensory detail. Write this quote down under show, not tell. Write it down, the whole quote. In short, no more shortcuts. 
only specific sensory detail, underlying specific sensory detail. Whenever I tell you to do something, by the way, those are things that I check for for points. Underline specific sensory detail, action, smell, taste, sound, feeling. This is all palinux, palette for writing. Just like a painter uses colors and lines, authors use description words based on senses. So even when you're doing an analysis of a book, let's say I ask you to talk about a character in a book, I want you to think about show, not tell. That's sort of the first thing I want to teach you about writing. I want to hear the character, not you telling me that a character did something. And Antonio did this in Merchant of Venice. Okay. I want you to tell me how he feels in a moment in time. So creative writing should influence everything you do. Show me. Don't just tell me it. It's especially true for creative writing. Right. Of course, we break rules or we bend rules, or sometimes we have to just do those little shortcuts. But for a good general advice, this is how I should see your stuff. So this is what I want you to attempt. And it's going to be difficult because you're going to want to do those shortcuts. Those shortcuts are things you learned in elementary school. Okay, it was fun. That's a good description for elementary school. But I want you to go beyond that. I want you to challenge yourself. You're going to continue your story. You started it, and now you're going to continue it. I'm going to give you a prompt. This is a little bit like flowery or whatever, just to kind of help you. But basically, it's just you starting your story with a little dream sequence. So I'm going to read this to kind of set the tone, and then you can continue it. You ready? Here's the beginning here. You don't have to write this down. You're just writing your story. I drowse into a deep party coma. Okay, it's like after a night of partying or whatever, right before school starts. You, uh, your eyelids close. It becomes sort of a projector screen of your mind, and you start being thrown back into the events of the summer. So you start going back and you're reliving sort of based on a dream something that happened to you over the summer. All you need to do is just write, write about your summer. You're in the moment, you're telling me what's going on about the summer using showing words, a sense You have 30 minutes for this. Normally I don't give you just a big blank at a time. Normally I give you about five minutes to start with a particular thing. This is diagnostic, which means I want to figure out how you are as a writer. Can you fill up that time? Are you going to stop before the 30 minutes is up? Or are you going to, get to be able to continue writing? So this is a writing part. Afterwards, you're going to read each other's work, and we're going to revise it. So just know that that's happening. The only thing that I'm going to do right now, though, is I want to time your first minute. Okay. So I'm going to give you about 30 seconds. Shh to start thinking about what your first sentence is going to be. Okay, so I'm going to time 30 seconds. Don't write at this time. You're just getting in the game. You're getting in the mode of writing. There's, it sounds like there's two maybe questions here. Yes, what's your question? Oh, are we writing solid goal in person circle? Uh, yeah, you're writing about your own circle that they've identified. Okay? So just choose that, that story. If you're absolutely stumped, you can choose your own. I don't, I don't care. I just I want to see you writing. And then what was your question, sir? What's up? Right. It's, uh, so 30 seconds, all you're going to be doing right now is thinking. And then I'm going to say, begin writing. And then I'm going to time you for one minute. That one minute is now going to become your words per minute. Okay? So you're just going to start going with it. Okay? So just bear with me. Here we go. 30 seconds. Go. Don't write. Just think about your first sentence. So if you can do this, you got this. Are you stopping? Twenty seconds. Just like all thinking, thinking, thinking. Now writing, thinking. Ten seconds. Then twenty, then fifteen. So that was about half the normal time that you would normally write. Just as a starting place. So just know kind of what you need to be doing versus what you've done so far. Right now, uh, you've already recorded the words per minute at the top. Very good. You swap with your neighbor. Good. Number three here on the top here, if you're saying, what are we doing? Number three, as you read, check for spelling errors. Annotate places that make no sense to you. Oh, 
Read it, read it, read it. Any spelling errors, if you can identify them, please do so. Make it a little bit better for me if, when I read it. If areas don't seem to make sense to you, have them clarify, write a question mark, maybe even ask them that, what do you mean by this? If you need a fix it form, if you want to do that as much, you can do that as well. You can help them out. Like one minute left and that's, I was like, alright, he broke out, Superman flew away. <laughs> minutes, I would like you to answer these two questions on number four. Following question, did he or she, he, did he use his senses to show the story and how? Right, so if it's a yes, then show me, tell me how. So analyze what they've written. Did he use his ta uh, taste when talking about the food? He used his smells when describing the setting or the atmosphere. Tell me how they use the senses. How? If it's a no, then you need to say they, they missed an opportunity to use their senses here. Okay, so yes or no, identify if they did it, how. Number two, if the author just told you about what happened. So if they didn't do any senses or they missed opportunities, identify where his senses could have been. So literally walk through and go taste, touch, smell, etc. And walk through that. Yes. No, just a big point. There's nothing to the body or one of those spaces. Yeah. No, you're judging theirs. Judging theirs still? Finishing up those questions on their paper. 
on their paper you write the answer to the questions. In order to get the point, someone needs to have written something on your paper. So make sure someone's looking at your stuff, or else you don't get points. Not that work nothing. <laughs> Quickly, you have about two more minutes. You guys did very well. If you can finish strong, you can all get five points extra credit here. It's really nice. You guys in the back, make sure that you've answered both of those questions. Yeah? Those questions right at the bottom. Just say how do they how do they show describe summarize how did they show the senses? Did you do the two sentences? Yeah, two questions. When you're done with the two questions, if you write CV at the top with your name, make sure their name's at the top right corner. Make sure on your own paper that your name is on the top corner with the date period number. Make sure, make sure, because you are turning that in. At the end of the period on your way out, it's your ticket out. Now, one more minute. This guy should read his story in front of <laughs> Interesting or weird? Super weird. Super weird. Right. Make sure make sure your name's on In the last two minutes, I'd like to share with you one that I uh, wrote in ten minutes. So this was my story. What do you think I'm, I'm going to write about for my summer? When you were meeting that one guy. Yeah. Can I can I get a sample of that one? Said the skinny man carrying the tow-headed boy. His face was worn with fleeting expressions and hidden eyes. His hair was a wrapped up mess of tangles. He wore a small cabana hat, as if to say I'm special, but you shouldn't know that. The waiter, who by now seemed to possess a secret between him and the stranger, narrowed his eyes in recognition. Your face is familiar, said the waiter with a thick European accent. Is that you? Are you Leo? All at once, the familiarity of the shapes and lines of the stranger's face became a reality. Mr. DiCaprio, standing in the shade of a small stand to my left, he looked at horror as his cover is blown, and I extend my hand, hoping he doesn't turn away. I, I love your work. I just need to shake your hand. With a limp wrist and a quick flit, Leo smiles fadingly and turns away without a second notice. I can see at that moment that he will not remember who I am. Oh. <laughs> but I have been changed. Okay. You guys are good. Make sure that the tables are all uh, clean, that you push them together. Make sure on your way out that you put your your story. I'm going to love to read them. Make sure your name is at the top right corner. <laughs>